morning. That was my trick or treat. <laughs> <laughs> opening up this morning. Good morning, Spirit Family. This actually is no trick. I have missed you, and I am happy to be here with you this morning. I bring the sweet treat that my talk this morning marks a turning point, um, the beginning of my return from sabbatical. I'm starting to ease back in, so it feels great, and what a wonderful day to start. You have all been wonderful in honoring my space and privacy during the sabbatical, and now we can reconnect. And I look forward to that joy and that excitement um, of reconnecting with all of you. And I want to also say thank you. Thank you very much, Zita, Reggie, and Safi, for the beautiful, beautiful gifts you have brought to this service this morning. Now, the theme, the um, Centers for Spiritual Living theme that we've been working with throughout October is going forward together. Uh, I know that sounds like sort of a Reverend Jenna sacred activism thing. Hey, it just, you know, sometimes synchronicity cannot be ignored. And today our focus is on, I'll meet you there. Hmm, sounds a little cryptic. And actually, it's quite big. We've got our work cut out for us, and I know we can do this together. You may have heard this African proverb that tells us, if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. Hmm. In our world, in our culture, in this day and age, um, technology ever more so than in the past is making it possible for all of us to go faster. Whether it's in our car, in an airplane, um, you know, how fast our computer downloads, whatever it is. You know, we have this thing for speed and we keep getting our fix, you know, as technology progresses. But we're going faster and at the same time, we're still carrying our past with us, not just our personal past, but also any cultural beliefs and practices that may not fit. Um, you know, who we've become, what we've become in this day and age. So, um, you know, some of those remnants are starting to catch up with us. And we've found that with COVID, we've been connecting less. And perhaps we've even, with everything that's swirling in the world, um, personally, um, nationally, globally, we might start to feel a bit confused about what we're going to be called into and what our priorities and our values are. Might they need to shift as we go forward? But we do know in Science of Mind, spiritual principle is, it never shifts, but it is that grounding rod that allows us to shift and stay in our center. So it's interesting that we're facing a new twist on this African proverb of go fast alone, go far together. And with, this, with all the issues that we're facing in our world, we're actually be, being called to go fast together. So the proverb said to go fast, go alone, to go far, go together. And we are being asked to go fast and far together. Oh, that is a different ballgame. And it's going to require us, each of us, to be resilient and our, you know, not just us, but our nation and our world to be resilient and to collaborate in a divided world with competing interests. So we may also need to reevaluate those priorities to identify what we value most. 
both individually and collectively. So this is new. We're in a new world and we need to do this together. I know that in this community, we totally support each other and that we will come together. We will learn the ropes, we will practice, and we will be successful at this. But let's talk about this a little deeper. You know, some of my favorite shows, um, when I watch Project Runway, Making the Cut, or some of those HGTV um, home design competitions, it seems that across the board, the worst assignment that can be given is when these creatives, creative contestants, are given a team assignment. They're no longer allowed to respond to an assignment working from their design aesthetic and their take on what they are called to do. It's always challenging when they have to create as a team. So we need a new approach. And we may not all line up at the same at this starting line all at the same time. In other words, some of us may come into this realization and this readiness, or ready or not, here we go, um, place. You know, some of us may come into it in a staggered continuum. We may not be all present all at once, but it doesn't change what we need to do. So what is spiritual about this? It's Sunday service. Um, what is spiritual about this? Let's reflect back on our global vision, Centers for Spiritual Living, a world that works for everyone. You know, this is an absolutely magnificent vision. And who can't embrace this, desire this? Our teaching emphasizes that we vision it. And we can learn to live into that vision, you know, practice being there, um, put it on, wear it a little bit. Um, what does it look like, feel like, all of that. Set our intentions for our world and for our role in bringing this forward. Go into spiritual practice, build that muscle, and act. Ernest Holmes was also clear on that. We have to take action. We often talk about moving our feet. We pray and move our feet. So this, month, this monthly theme we've had throughout October of going forward together supports that marvelous new world, um, that marvelous vision for the world that um, we have, the global vision. But here's the thing. We have this wonderful vision. How do we bring it about? You know, that takes planning and logistics and coordination and collaboration and all sorts of things. That's ours to do. And while we are going fast and forward together, this is where Step one is getting ready to be in this role so we really do it well and that we can be instrumental to creating a world that works for everyone in a peaceful, honoring, respectful, unifying way. So how are we going to bring this about? Because we all have skin in this game. All right, well, here's some possibilities. These are the more familiar ones. Should we compete? You know, and when there's competition, we're likely to be losing time debating and trying to determine, you know, who ends up top of the mountain. Or we can flex our power and influence. Let the most powerful decide for us. Or we could follow a popular Hollywood or social media influencer. Question is, will we like the results? You know, or let someone else do it for us, and we just sort of sit back. You know, these are the traditional ways. These are the ways that, you know, at least for a century or more, we, and in some ways for much longer, humans have gone about addressing change. Um, and I 
are, you know, and sometimes there are other ways that are more violent as well. We have so many options. Which is the most likely to create a world that works for everyone in a beneficial way? So it's really calling on us to dive deeper in this philosophy, in our faith, in our trust, in our belief, and in our manifestation. We need to go deeper. That's what's spiritual about this. Each of us upping our game, upping our alignment and our actions in oneness with the creator so we can start to live more seamlessly as an inseparable team. You know, we affirm that we are one with God and we are one with all creation, including the planet. And yet we're not always operating that way in our day-to-day -day lives. There isn't a day that goes by that my personal spiritual practice reflects on. I am inseparably one with God. God and I are partners. And then I live into that. And I invite you to try that on and, and see if that helps you go more deeply into that living alignment. We give voice to being all one, one with each other and one with the earth. It's time now that we do this as an inseparable team at the earthly human level as well. And this really calls us to pay more attention now. Excuse me. Um, to the spiritual code, the master teacher Jesus gave us 2,000 years ago. Do unto others as we would have them do unto us. We embrace that. And now we're called to live that more deeply. So let's start piecing a path together. And um, I'm also going to be pulling in a lot of quotations of Ernest Holmes from the October Science of Mind magazine dailies. On October 14th, you know, I'm really surprised. October is always devoted to Ernest Holmes. And I was surprised this year that there were some quotations in there where he makes mention of some things on the more troublesome side. And so that's going to crop in here as well. But these are quotations from Ernest Holmes. On October 14th, there's, um, I'm quoting from the, on October 14th about the topic of creating the future. Because we know that our thought is creative, our feelings are creative, and we have a new future to create together. Holmes said, if our experiences are the result of our thoughts, then the future if it is going to be given birth from the present, will be largely the content of our current minds, feelings, faith, and fear. It is no wonder that the future so seldom becomes better than the past, and often worse as pessimism takes the place of optimism. So there is our challenge, front and center. Our thoughts, our feelings, our fears are creative, as is our faith. And we know that we are called ever more deeply, profoundly forward to be aligned in our oneness with Creator and to be creating from that glorious vision that we have and holding the images that were shown of an apocalyptic future of all the fearful things that might happen 
of all the problematic things we witness, to know that there is a greater truth and we are instrumental in bringing that forward. That's what's spiritual. So let's keep in mind that our thoughts now create some future effect. What we are living in presently is the after effect of some thoughts, feelings, and fears in the past. That's where we are called to mindfulness and spiritual practice and faith. Because we are collected. It's not only that our thoughts are creating, but as a human species, every thought is contributing to collective mass consciousness, to that future in every moment. I mean, let's think about the deposits, the contributions we're making to mass consciousness amongst all the mass consciousness that's been built around apocalyptic movies, um, video games, and so on and so forth, and the news cycle. So how do we consciously and collectively create this together and do a better job this time? You know, we have a chance to do a do-over, but we don't know if we'll be able to do over our do-over. So we have to get it better, much better, do a much better job with it this time around. How often do we hear you know, Jenna, you're being innocent, naive. Um, it's always been this way. This is human nature. Just give it up. Stop trying to create a better world. Humans are just this way. And every time this, I hear that, and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if all of us would say, you know, at some point I've said that myself. I probably have said that myself. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna confess to that. But at this stage of my life, I really bristle when I hear that. Because for me, it deflects, but more than deflects, it's a why bother. And let's take it back to what we were just talking about. That why bo that why bother is really saying, you know. All that momentum of all that mass consciousness that's built up, well, we're just going to let it keep building. We're just going to let it continue, you know, to reiterate what's been before. Technology might be different. The poles might shift, but we're just going to let it keep going. I bristled there. And, you know, sometimes I just want to rudely say, hey, you know, I hear what you're saying. I want to recognize that. And let's consider, as humans, we don't live in caves anymore. Right? We're no longer constrained to the ground. We figured out how to fly. I mean, we even have flown to the moon and Mars. Gay marriage used to be unthinkable. And now it's inevitable. So humans do change. And, you know, Maybe we need to have a fest in which we just start a rant on all the incredible things that humans have changed, what has changed, so we know we can do it. There's another part of our human nature, and that is that every thought and feeling is creative. And when we choose to come together and we choose to believe a new vision, a higher vision, and enough of us choose that and believe that, then things change. So I want to pose these questions to you. Have we changed how we treat each other? Have we chosen to see the divine in each other as our top priority? And to do this, no matter who we are dealing with, and no matter how greatly they may trigger us. Have we chosen to create more, a more just and compassionate world. These are choices, and we are always at that choice point. 
And so we can do this. What are we choosing? How are we going forward together? You know, artificial intelligence is programmed by humans. Our mass consciousness is programmed by us. So let's choose our new deposits into that mass consciousness. And I've been going through this with some of the young ones in my family who have been saying the same thing. You know, it's just the way things are. It's human nature. And I have this discussion with them that when we believe that, when we buy into that's just the way it is, that's human nature, we are reinforcing that myth and we are forfeiting our creative power. But when enough humans choose something greater and new and different, the world changes. And most of all, one of the key changes we need to make is we need to start operating out of duality. Whoa, wait a minute. I've been saying this to myself more and more, get out of duality. The young ones in my family have been saying, get out of duality. But that's almost one of those paradoxes that we can't quite grasp, but we need to, and we can. So interestingly enough, there's always wonderful synchronicities happening in the world, in our universe. We've heard about 100 monkeys, I believe. Most of you have heard about that. And if not, just paraphrasing very briefly, um, scientists years back recognized that, that we're observing um, monkeys in the wild. Notice that if one of them changed, it took a while for a few others to change, and then a while for a few others to change. But there was a tipping point at which, and it was, I think, approximately 100, and that's where it got titled, that there was a tipping point at which when enough of them had adopted that new change, maybe it was using a stick as a tool or whatever it may have been, suddenly everyone changed. It was that point where it became present and adopted everywhere. And just this past week when I was traveling, I happened upon an issue of Yes! magazine. Um, and in that there was um, an article on the 25% tipping point. A, um, a social change scientist who has been exploring and um, researching what works in terms of social change and learned that there is a specific tipping point for humans and social change. And that is 25%, not 24%, not 23%, not 20%. 25%. And what he learned is that when 25% of us start to adopt, um, start to uh, accept an idea, when it becomes mainstream and accepted at that 25% of the population level, that that is when there is just this momentous cascading effect of it becoming acceptable by the majority of the population and social change ensues. So I titled my talk this morning, I'll Meet You There. It sounds perhaps a little cryptic and my first go-to is of course, you know, the question is what does this mean? Uh, and my first go-to of course is that famous saying by Rumi, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I will meet you there. For me personally, that field is a field of consciousness. That field is the field of, di of divine order. That field is the field of being in alignment and oneness, being in our divine birthright of inseparably one with creator, with whom we partner and with every point of creation. That is the field 
beyond right doing and wrong doing. That is the field that is beyond duality. So let's meet there because Rumi is calling us out of duality. He's calling us out of separation. You know, whenever we are at odds with one another, we are separate. Whenever we say it's okay to damage the environment and pollute it or whatever for profit, that is separation from all of creation. So let's think about that field that is beyond right doing and wrong doing, that divine field of oneness and divine consciousness in which we are all one and from which we have come forward out of duality. Um, and when we start down this road together, out of duality, out of honor and respect for each other, despite the differences, with compassion, with compassionate listening, and collaborating because we are vested in the future we are building. Remarkable things are going to happen. And as we do so, always keeping that global vision in our mind, we will build a better future. Remember Ernest Ohm said, we have to see bigger, vision bigger, to build bigger and not with pessimism. He also said on October 21st in the dailies, how can we expect to find beauty if we contemplate only unloveliness? The kingdom of heaven must be a state wherein one senses unity with good, the unity of all people with good. That's our call. That's our spiritual calling. And, you know, we cannot delegate consciousness and we cannot delegate co-creation to others. Well, we can't delegate it to them. We can defer to them. But we'll be living in this future we're building, as will our generations to come. We have a vested interest. And so I know we're all on board. So I want to tap back into some of the other things that Ernest Holmes said in this October's Science of Mind, the dailies, about getting out of duality. Today, the reading for today from the Voice Celestial was about seeing the real. I must find the real, I'm going to read these, I must find the real behind the things that seem. And then he goes on to see, say, and this one amazed me, and creeds, and creeds, I shudder here, how often they affirm damnation. From them, no answer comes to me. This is calling us out of that realm of effect and to see the divine real behind all illusion, behind all Shadows behind all the news cycle, behind everything. The reading for yesterday, October 30th, from Creative Mind, see God in all. Learn to see God in all manifestation, in all people, through all events, and I will add, every place that is earth. The infinite one manifesting in an infinite variety of forms. The body is not one mass of pollution. It is the temple of the living God. And when we are in that field of oneness of all creation, our body temple is every one and every aspect of this planet. On October 29th, um, he talks about God's language. All of us are rooted in the universal mind of God, the most dynamic reality in the universe. Don't be afraid to talk to God. 
but he, te- he clues us in, God speaks a certain kind of language and there is nothing negative in it. And so that calls us to recognize what is less than desirable, but not to speak negatively. In other words, recognize where we are, what needs to change, but we don't have to disparage it. You don't have to disparage it. Uh, October 28th, develop our spiritual muscle. We cannot create attraction. Spiritual attraction is. We do not even create our own muscles. They are developed by use. And so he's inviting us to dig deeper in our spiritual practice and understanding what we're facing and that we will get better in doing this day by day by day, that's how we build that spiritual muscle. Remember that like begets like. We have to love if we are going to broadcast love. And once again, that reminder that we build our future and what are we building? So what is ours to do in wrapping up here? Unity and oneness with each other and the earth. See the real behind what what seems, in other words, what's presented. A great example is the news media. See the divine in each other and release, like the leaves are releasing right now, our judgments. Build our spiritual muscles of faith, trust, and belief. This is how we can move forward together in a higher way for a world that works for everyone. So let's meet in that field of divine consciousness and oneness and create a just, healed, and loving world for all. And in keeping with the times and our need of releasing the past so that we can go forward, I'd like to close with a poem by Lucille Clifton. The leaves believe such letting go is love Such love is faith. Such faith is grace. Such grace is God. I agree with the leaves. And so it is.